I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. Just click on the link in the description below or go to my website, AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth and in this video I'm going to be talking to you about why breaking up is so painful. Well, if you're going through a breakup, chances are you're in tremendous amounts of pain, both emotional pain and physical pain, and it can be downright unbearable at times. It can absolutely consume you 24-7, even when you sleep, you can toss and turn, wake up in the middle of the night with cold sweats. That used to happen to me all the time. I would wake up just in these cold sweats where my t if I was wearing a t-shirt, I'd have to change it. Even my boxer shorts would be damp. It was just the most uncomfortable thing. I could have the fan on. didn't matter how cold it was, how hot, doesn't matter. I was uncomfortable. Um, there's tremendous amounts of um, symptoms that we experience during a breakup, both both the physical and the emotional side of it. And in order to understand why it hurts so bad to go through a breakup, you have to understand love and attachment because really that is the key to all of this. Because you want to reframe the way you look at love a little bit. In other words, there's a component to love or an aspect to love that has to do with survival, right? And it's a bizarre way to look at it, but really, human beings are meant to attach and we are wired to attach. Now, this isn't something that you just look at somebody and think, oh, I do that. No, it is ingrained in us at birth. We automatically, unconsciously know this. When we're born, after a few months, we start to bond with our caregivers. Now, I know some of you may think that it happens right away, but we are kind of not wired to attach to our caregivers, mom especially, until about three months old. And that's because um, if you attach to your mom and she passed away in childbirth or slight, shortly after for whatever reason, that would be traumatic to the baby. So. After around three months, that's when we really start to realize that our mom is completely separate from us. Now, we are meant to fall in love with our mother. We are meant to fall in love with our caregivers because it helps us bond and connect. And that's part of survival. Because if you look at human beings, we obviously don't have claws or wings or fangs or a shell on our back that we can hide in or spikes or needles. Our survival is based on our attachment to other human beings. So, if you think about it, what is the highest priority for a person? Survival, right? Like you have to survive if you don't, nothing is going to come above survival because without that you're dead. So, survival is the highest. And so we understand unconsciously I have to connect, I have to stay connected with my mother, with my father, with my loved ones in order to survive. You can even see this behavior in two-year-olds. If you have ever had a kid or you've been around a two-year-old, what do they do? They wander off into the other room, they go play. Then after a little while, they toddle back in, check out where's mom and dad, they go to you, want a little bit of reassurance and love, and then they go off again. Why? Because even at that age, you don't have to tell them to come back. They come back on their own because they know instinctively, I've got to check out where my parents are, who takes care of me, who protects me in order to survive. So, all of this has a huge impact on breakups and the pain of breakups because think about... Uh, a lost child for a minute. I'm sure many of you can think of examples in your life where you've been at a grocery store or uh, you know in the mall or something like that and you see a lost child. What happens? The child's on the floor, they're crying, they're inconsolable and they look like you know 
they're dying inside. And why? They feel like they're dying inside. Because they know without their caregivers, they're going to die. Whether they think it or not is another story, but instinctually, that's the, what we do. We stay close to our loved ones to survive. So, when somebody that we love ends the relationship, we feel disconnected from them, and it brings us back to that early feeling where we felt disconnected from our caregivers. We feel that pain of death. We literally, it literally feels like we're dying inside. Why? Well, first of all, your body is releasing chemicals like stress hormones that make you feel awful because it's trying to tell you, like when you're a kid, reconnect or die, reconnect or die. And so, you're trying to reconnect and that's why we desperately want to reconnect with our loved ones. It's so important that you understand what's going on within your body so you can understand, okay, this is also because of the chemical reactions going on inside me. My brain is releasing chemicals that are making me feel pain and releasing stress hormones and um, chemicals that are making me feel worse. It's good to understand that there are changes going on within your body and that is part of the reason that you're in so much pain. The other aspect is that when you've had a lot of loss and abandonment in your early childhood, when you experience it as an adult, it's traumatizing. And with the trauma, your brain can't understand the difference between the past and the present. So the trauma takes us back to our childhood where we felt that abandonment, that fear of death, and it amps it up in us. So people that don't have that kind of loss in their childhood where they had two parents that were secure and loving and affectionate most of the time, they're less likely to experience the pain as much as somebody that has a lot of attachment trauma in their childhood. Um, it almost mirrors the level of pain. If you think about it, it makes sense because somebody that is securely attached had most of their needs met. So, when we have a partner uh, and the relationship, we are confident that we will find someone else to meet our needs because it's always been that way for us. If you haven't had your needs met, and you've been abandoned a lot, when somebody leaves you, you're terrified. It's happening again. I'm abandoned again. It's traumatic, remember, so it brings you back to the past where you felt that trauma, that pain, and that, that you know pain of death comes back to the present, amplifies, and it just keeps coming out, and it's like a faulty alarm system that was broken many, many years ago in your childhood, and now it's still broken in the present, and you don't know how to shut it off. It is very, very difficult. And it's not easy to turn off. It's not magical. There's no magical solution. I always tell you guys the best way to deal with it is to talk about it. That's been my best experience with it. That's what Margaret has taught me over the years. Quite frankly, Margaret is an, a fantastic clinician, as you guys can see, and everything that I've ever seen about it tells me that you have to talk about these things in order to heal. I mean, you could go all the way back to Freud, where one of his famous quotes is, it is that we are never so defenseless against suffering as when we love, never so helplessly unhappy as when we have lost our loved object of its love. Even Freud knew that it is the most painful thing we can go through. I could tell you from experience, my mom passed away several years ago, and as painful as it was to lose her, because I was very close with her, honestly, I would say my breakups were more painful than that. And I know it sounds ridiculous, but... Ask anybody going through a breakup, I'm sure most of you will agree with that. I, now, maybe losing a child would be worse than a breakup, uh, but 
I can tell you, I, and I've talked to you guys about this. Many of you guys have said the same thing. My mom, pa dad passed away, and, and they, you guys tell me you, you lost your parents, and this is worse. Which doesn't seem normal, but it is, okay? So, if that's your experience, it's perfectly normal. So, I've got an email today from a guy. Actually, I have two, and they're both by the same guy. Now, the first one was about a month ago when he sent me his initial breakup email, and we did an email coaching. And the second one is from a recent email coaching, and I think you're going to see a lot of the same symptoms that he has going through his breakup. So this is the first email, which is about a month ago. He says, Hi, Coach. Uh, I am a 33-year-old guy, and I have some college. I am an operator at an oil refinery. My ex broke up with me a few weeks ago. She's in her late 20s. She works at the same job as me where we initially met. We dated on and off for a year before we got serious in the past year. We lived together for part of that time and seriously talked about getting married over the next year. We have no kids together. Her parents were strict when she was younger. Her dad disappeared before birth and tries to come back from time to time, but she's not having it. Later in high school years, her mother didn't care if she was around or not. I should note that the relationship is much better and she's back li living with her mother and stepfather. Well, you could see that mom not really caring would have a huge impact on her ability to connect. We've been bickering back and forth for a week or so. We got into an argument about working so much. I lost my cool and told her to move out. Ouch. Sometimes we say things in the heat of an argument that we really don't mean. When I finally calmed down, I called her from work to apologize and tell her I didn't mean it. When I got home the following morning, all her stuff was gone. Oh, that's terrible. I mean, I don't see why she left over that. I mean, to be angry about that would be completely normal and, and hurt, but to end the relationship? That seems a little overdramatic to me. It destroyed me. I didn't eat or sleep at all for the first four days. I'm sure a lot of you guys are going through that right now. Not, even, not eating, not sleep. Man, I lost so much weight when I was going through a breakup. Probably close to 20 pounds in a matter of, I don't know, maybe four months, something like that. I had to call in sick to work. I have been a haze ever since then. That's that anxiety. Uh, I really feel like anxiety will put you in a fog. I don't have a good memory of my childhood. And... Looking back as an adult, I realized I had a lot of anxiety. My mom had a lot of anxiety. And so I think your anxiety causes you to kind of be in a fog. I don't know if it's a survival technique that maybe by staying in this kind of hazy fog mode, you don't think about what's going on around you. I'm not sure. Maybe it decreases the pain. I'm not sure. Uh, but it seems to me like it could be a coping mechanism. We talked on the phone in the morning I got home. I begged her to stay. We talked for a while, but she ended the conversation with, We'll see. I just can't think straight right now. I love you. Okay. So, at least she's telling you she cares. Let's see how it goes. I sent her a text two days after that, which she ignored. And I haven't made contact since. In her eyes, the two biggest problems in the relationship were my moodiness and having to walk around on eggshells. That's a problem. That means she didn't feel safe in the relationship. And you got to be very aware of how you treat somebody when you're upset. I do have quite a temper. Okay. Yep. So that would definitely have a big impact on what's going on here. Never physically violent, but say hurtful things before I can even wrap my head around the situation. Yeah, so that's a problem. 
Um, she's probably not feeling safe around you and not trusting you at this point. I've watched some of your videos and the ones about anxiety and that behavior fit me pretty well. So that gives me something to work on to better myself. Well, that is great uh, that you have been proactive about trying to change yourself since then. I'm looking advice on getting her back. I still want to marry this woman. What advice do you have? What will give me the best chances at getting her back? I've been in no contact for 12, 12 days now. She quit responding to texts, so I didn't want to keep chasing her if she wanted to be left alone. Well, as you could see, at this point in time, she wasn't even responding to his text messages. So in that situation, you can't continue to chase after her. It's only going to make it worse. So let's see how things have been since that time. And it's probably right around a month, maybe a little bit more. So he said... Hi, Craig. First off, glad you made it through the hurricane. I live on the Mississippi Gulf Coast, and I know how much hell those things can create. Oh, yes, my uh, area didn't have a lot of damage, but a lot of people that I know lost power for upwards of a week. That's pretty torturous in Orlando when you have this kind of heat. It is no fun. You're just, like, constantly, like, uh, miserable. It's like a swamp down here, right? This is our second email coaching. I've learned a ton about myself in the last month and a half, mostly from the videos. Certain behaviors I have done more or less pushed her away. Some of the things I said I did I had no idea would have that kind of impact on her as you described making her feel inferior and distant. I can honestly say I never meant those things. I just had no idea. And I know that that is true for most of you guys. You grew up in homes where you had tremendous about amounts of abuse and neglect and abandonment and people didn't treat you well or, you know, not to blame. They probably did the best that they could, but that's the way it was. And so you aren't even aware of how your behavior is impacting another person. And this goes especially if you have a lot of anxiety. Remember, when you experience separation anxiety, it causes you to go into primal panic, which is kind of what I was talking about, pretty much what I was talking about earlier, when I talking about the disconnect, the child at the store that loses the parents, that's primal panic right there, okay? So when you go into that mode, you become very selfish and self-absorbed. All you care about is reconnecting. You don't care about how the other person feels. You don't care about what they want. If they tell you they want space, the last thing you want to give them is space. You're like, I'm not giving them space. I'm feeling terrified here. I'm, you feel like you're dying. So that's not going to be what you want to give. Uh, so you got to be aware when you have anxiety, you have to learn to calm yourself down. If you overreact and you try and overcompensate, you're just going to make that person feel smothered and they got to get away. I'm trying to manage my anxiety and some of the behaviors associated with it, but some days it just gets the best of me and I break down. That's completely normal. Okay? All those symptoms that you're having are very normal. I've improved a little since we talked, but not much. I've tried to carry on with my normal life. I got back to the gym shortly after the breakup, but still have trouble eating at times. Well, getting exercise is a great way to help yourself during a breakup because your body releases different chemicals that make you feel good like adrenaline, endorphins, stuff like that. It counteracts on those other chemicals that are being released from, released from the breakup. I picked back up with some of my hobbies, going out with friends and even taking a couple of trips to different places. That's great. All those are great things. However, I find myself having to watch tons of your videos to keep it together on a regular basis, including the recommended videos from the first email about 10 to 15 times each. Wow, man, that's great. You're doing great, man. That kind of motivation, it's going to stick. It just takes time. I don't have Facebook or anything like that, so I don't know what she's been up to and vice versa. I now live alone, and coming home from work is usually the hardest time for me. Coming home to her and her daughter was something I look forward to. I can relate to that. That is what I experienced for myself with my breakup too. 
you know, the one that I talk about with Applebee's, the girl that, uh, you know, was crying at Applebee's, I was extremely attached to her daughter, who was only two and turning three. It was killing me inside to be disconnected from them, especially her daughter, because, you know, she was only a year old when we started dating. It wasn't even talking. And then, you know, she's three years old. So it's, uh, you know, you get attached to a kid like that. It was killing me inside. I know exactly how you're feeling. That's why my breakup was so hard, is that I really had two losses at the same time. I still haven't contacted her, and it's been 35 days or so. I had to make myself quit counting. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Reminds me of Rey in the new Star Wars movie, where she puts a little line every day since her family's been gone. <laughs> Sad, man. It sucks. I've came up with a million different reasons to call or text, but I know that won't turn out the way I want. Some of her things are still here, but I can't bring myself to throw them out. She may actually want some of the th some of those things, uh, just not at this moment. Yeah, I wouldn't throw those out either at this point. It's only been a month. The pain is unbearable at times. So much that I feel like dying. Don't worry, I'm not suicidal good and none of you should ever even consider it okay i know you can be feeling very depressed but do not even consider that for one second go to professionals go to a doctor go to evaluated by a psychiatrist they can provide you medication if you've got serious anxiety or depression as margaret used to tell me you don't get any points for suffering there's no bonus points for suffering through it. Her birthday is coming up this weekend and hasn't made anything easier on me. No, of course not. I know I can't contact her for that either. I just feel like all this time we could be making memories together and it's just passing me by. Or me, anyway. Oh man, I know. I know what you're going through, man. That's why I'm sharing this email with everybody because Everybody is experiencing what you're experiencing right now. So you are not alone. There are literally thousands of people that are feeling this very feeling right now. You are not alone. And you can see it in the comment sections. Everybody can relate to you, okay? It's good to know that you're not alone. I'm trying to let her go and move on, but I just can't seem to shake it. I can distract myself for small periods of time, but no matter what, my mind always goes back to her and what I should have done and would have done differently. Yeah, you're bargaining. I did that too. I was really, 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 really bad about bargaining. I would sit there and go over every scenario, every different thing I could have done, all of the th reasons that she gave me for the breakup, which were really not the reasons anyway. She didn't know how to explain that. And that's one thing that you always have to know, guys, is that a lot of times your ex is not going to be completely truthful about the reason they are breaking up with you because there might be another person in the background. But also, a lot of times they don't understand the reason they broke up with you. So they give you these things, they have to tell you something, but I see through that nonsense. So... Now, looking back, I can see that the reasons she gave me were not really the reasons. But she had to say something, because I wasn't going to leave her alone. <laughs> I tell you guys, I was bad. I made a lot of the mistakes that I warn you guys about. At this point, I feel I should give up on her ever coming back and us getting another shot at this. I'm still completely in love with her and her daughter. I watched that video too, and I realize how much I miss her as well. I know that feeling, man. That's why I have spent so many hours trying to figure this stuff out, trying to help you guys understand it, because I've been there, and it was the worst. And I want you guys to have as much information as you can to get through this. I haven't given up on myself. No matter what happens, I know... I don't want to be the ugly person that got me into this situation in the first place. So I'll continue to make the necessary changes to rid myself 
of this anxiety and negativity. I just want the pain to stop. I am so sorry you're going through this. I really am. I know what it feels like to go through this and I wish I had a magic wand for all you guys to make that pain go away. Unfortunately, it just doesn't work like that. I don't want to think about her 24-7, literally stumbling through life, thinking about what I could have done and what could have been. What can I do? What advice do you have? Well, you have to understand this is a process. It doesn't go away overnight. There's no magic wand. There's no magic text messages to get her back. Believe me, if there was, I would tell you. Um, so, it takes time. It really does take time. You've got to continue to focus on what your life, you want, what you want your life to be like. You can't keep focusing on everything that you did wrong and bargain over how you could change it or do it differently. The best you can do is take a look at your weaknesses and figure out what did I do in that situation? How would I handle it differently next time? Okay? Because chances are the things that came up in arguments before will come up in arguments again. And if you're not prepared how to handle it differently next time, you're going to continue the cycle. And before you know it, you're going to go right back to those old patterns. And I highly suggest you watch the video, The Reason Couples Argue, because that is a really, really important skill that I give in that video. And you have to have it mastered. Otherwise, when you get into a heated argument with a, somebody new that you're dating or her again, just go back to those old behaviors. So it's a process. You're doing the right things. You're getting uh, exercise, which will help release chemicals in your body to make you feel better. Do new things. Research suggests that by trying new things that you've always wanted to do, it releases chemicals in your body. I believe one of them is oxytocin. Mm, mistaken about that one. But I do know that your body releases chemicals that make you feel good. Just continue to focus moving forward and realize you're not going to feel like this forever. You're not. I always recommend finding a good therapist in your area to help you through it. I'm sure you have insurance. Um, look into it. Find a provider. Find a therapist you like to talk about it. It does feel better to talk about it. And we do heal by talking about it. That's why I was going to Margaret twice a week. I only tell you guys to do what I, what I did for myself. And uh, I would consider getting a psychiatrist evaluation. Even if you get on some kind of medication for a couple of months, it's going to help. You know, maybe they'll prescribe you a light dosage of something to help with depression, anxiety. You'll feel better. You may not think, oh, I don't like drugs. I don't like medicine. Well, let me tell you something. If you had a heart condition, you would take heart medication, right? If you had, if you're a diabetic, you would take insulin, right? Well, don't rule out something that will make you feel better in the short term. So, you just have to keep going forward. Stop beating yourself up over the past. She wasn't perfect either, okay? If you had broken up with her, here's something to think about. If you had been the one to break up with her, I guarantee she would be sitting there doing this too. What did I do wrong? How could I have done this better? So believe me, it's not all your fault. The person that gets broken up with kind of sits there powerless and focuses on everything they did wrong. But it's not all your fault. And if it was the other way around, she would be doing the same things right now. What did I do wrong? Bargaining over everything. And you got to keep that in mind, okay? Both of you created the relationship. Of course, you have to own up to your mistakes and better yourself from them. But continue to move forward every day. Go forward. There are going to be good days. There are going to be bad days. There are going to be terrible moments. There are going to be great moments. It's just a matter of time. I can tell you because, you know, I'm removed from my breakups. It's in my past. And in the future, you're going to feel great. You're going to be so proud of yourself 
and you're going to feel good about the work that you've done and the changes that you made. It might not get you your ex back. I don't know the answer to that. But even if it doesn't, whoever you date next is going to be blown away by what you know because you will know more than 99% of the people in this world about relationships. And that's pretty damn amazing, if you ask me. So, keep working on yourself, man. It doesn't mean that it's hopeless. It's only been 35 days. That's not a big deal. I had somebody come back recently after I think it was nine months. They hadn't heard from their ex from nine months. I had a guy today that I talked to that heard from his ex, uh, and he hadn't heard from her in a couple months, too. So it happens all the time. Don't think that it's because it's been 35 days, that's it. Now, that doesn't mean you want to stay in that and live there and, and not move on emotionally. You want to, but that isn't going to stop them from coming back. So, if you want to get my help personally, just go to my website, AskCraig.net, sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I do email coaching, I do Skype coaching, and if you got to get with me right away, I do offer emergency after hours Skype coaching. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth, and I will talk with you soon.